Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Literal combat ships are small surface vessels designed for near-shore operations. LCS was envisioned as a networked, agile, and stealthy surface vessel that would defeat threats in the literals. However, its ability to successfully conduct such missions has been questioned. There are two variants of the LCS, the Freedom Class and the Independence Class. Each vessel belonging to either class is equipped with a flight deck and hangar for housing two SH-60 or MH-60 Seahawk helicopters, a stern ramp for operating small boats, and a standard cargo volume to transport small assault force, along with military vehicles. To support attack missions and for defense in the waters, the LCS is equipped with armaments such as the MK-110 57mm guns and RIM-116 rolling airframe missiles. Austal Limited, an Australian-based shipbuilding company, has been the prime contractor for almost all of the Independence variant LCS. They were responsible for everything from designing and construction to commissioning and christening the ship. Initially, the LCS designers developed parts of the LCS individually and collectively on the software. Once the design of the ship is completed, it is time for the actual work. The parts are cut into shape and joined together. After several months of construction, the ship finally takes shape and is ready to roll out. The ship conducts various sea trials before it is moved into service. The trials determine the actual performance and seaworthiness of the LCS and focus on the vessel's speed, maneuverability, equipment, and safety measures. If LCS passes the sea trials and is deemed seaworthy, it is finally commissioned and moved into service. Some of the LCS have a trimaran hull, which includes a main hull and two smaller outrigger holes attached to the main hull with lateral beams. Due to this rare design, it is tough to launch a trimaran hole into the water using rollers, which is why Austal developed a unique way of launching these ships into water with minimal effort. Over the years, the launch process has really um, evolved. It used to take hours to roll the ship out. Now I think we just rolled this one out in about 20 or 30 minutes. So it's very efficient. They used a modern, safe, and efficient multi-step procedure of rolling the ship onto a moored deck barge and then transferring the ship from the barge to a floating dry dock. The dry dock was already submerged, which allowed the ship to float on the water for the first time. Finally, the dry dock was removed and the ship was ready for sea trials. During sea acceptance trials, major systems and equipment of the LCS are comprehensively tested to demonstrate their successful operation and mission readiness. These trials are supervised by the United States Navy's Board of Inspection and Survey to validate the quality of the construction and compliance with Navy requirements. These sea trials go a long way in ensuring the crew's safety and safeguarding national interests. After 
the sea trials, the ship moves back to its home port. For instance, the Independence variant littoral combat ship USS Augusta arrived at its San Diego home port after completing all assessments, certifications, and advanced training requirements in Mobile, Alabama. The crew had to dodge three tropical storms to make Augusta's maiden transit to her home port. It was an unreal experience for the sailors on the all-new LCS. Many of the initial LCS was developed by Lockheed Martin. To launch these ships into the water, the company utilized the side launch technique. It is a unique way of launching an LCS into the water for the first time while avoiding any damage to its exterior. The breakthrough of the LCS sliding into the water is a wholesome moment for the entire production team. Initially, the ship is placed on a steel frame, which is attached to several slanted beams. When these beams are released, the LCS leans on one side and slips into the water due to its own weight. However, it quickly stabilizes itself due to its extraordinary buoyancy and stability. The side launch technique may also be used to launch a commercial ship into the water, such as the Maersk connector. During the launch ceremony of this humongous sea vessel, several representatives of Maersk's supply service, Deep Ocean UK, and the Damon Shipyards Group gather at the Damon Shipyards in Romania. This was a very special occasion for everyone present at the ceremony. Today's event marks a very important milestone, which could not be achieved without the hard work, professionalism, and commitment of our employees. You should be proud of yourselves and the work you have done. The Mirsk connector was also placed on a steel frame. However, it was held on by ropes. Once it was go time, two of the crew workers used axes to cut the ropes. The Mirsk connector leaned on its side and slipped into the water while maintaining its stability. Unlike other launching methods that use fixed infrastructures, airbag launching has relatively fewer limitations and can be used in versatile ways. It is an innovative and safe technique to launch ships into water. Typically, these airbags are cylindrical in shape, with hemispherical heads at both ends. They are made of reinforced rubber layers and have high load capacity, which makes this method applicable to all types of sea vessels, regardless of their sizes. The airbag launching technique is arguably safer than other options like sideways launching, mainly due to the fact that the airbags provide additional support to the hull of the ship. An infamous occurrence of the airbag technique was the launching of a sea vessel by JIER Marine in Nantong, China. During this launching event, the vessel was lifted and moved to the launch position with airbags.
The engineers on site closely monitored the water level, and once it was above par, the crew unlocked the pulling wire ropes, forcing the vessel to roll over airbags and splash into the water. Another renowned technique for launching ships is the steel blade slide method that was applied for the launch of the multi-purpose offshore vessel MV Dino Polaris at the Besiktas shipyard in Turkey. The vessel has a dead weight of 6,000 tons, which is why it was placed on steel blades and was later released so it could slide its way into water. It is important to continuously maintain sea vessels to extend their lives. For instance, the maintenance crew replaces the tow bollard and the ship's intercom system. They also maintain the shafts of the propeller blades, the gear motors, and a bunch of other stuff on the ship. Sometimes the maintenance crew has to replace the main engines of the ship, which further requires them to remove the old piping of the engines. Once the new engines are placed inside the ship, the maintenance crew installs new piping and exhaust systems. Finally, the crew replaces the lube oil, fuel oil, and compressed air, and the ship becomes ready to roll out. Sometimes it becomes necessary to modify sea vessels to meet the increasing demands of the ocean. Therefore, companies like Whole Vein BV are working tirelessly to introduce new naval concepts. The company's hallmark product is the Whole Vein, an underwater wing mounted under the stern of a vessel that recovers energy from the stern wave by converting it into forward thrust thereby increasing efficiency by reducing resistance and fuel consumption. Recently, they designed, built, and installed the whole vein onto HNLMS Groningen, which, as predicted, reduced the resistance reductions. In addition, the top speed of the vessel was increased to 21 knots, and pitching and yawing motions were reduced, which increased the onboard comfort drastically. In fact, the vessel became more stable, which would make helicopter landings safer in the future and improve the performance of other systems on board, such as radars and satellite communications. Innovative naval concepts are crucial for addressing the evolving challenges of naval operations. Ensuring that sea vessels remain agile and effective in response to increasing demands, technological advancements, and the complexities of modern maritime environments. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.